Oh, hello there. Welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name's Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I am excited to be back. We've had a nice long break. We were off all of last week. We relaxed, we had some fun with our family, and now we're back streaming all week, every week going forward. We have a lot coming up, especially with Adobe Max in just a few months, I think it is. Ooh, I'm excited. We had a kickoff meeting, I think it was yesterday. I can't say anything, but we got, got some good stuff. We've got Laura and Eva, or Eva, if I mispronounce your name, I do apologize. Vipin and Cody and Pascal and Anahit and Michelle and Wesley and Etsy. Welcome everyone, Jenna. If you are tuning in here live on Behance, let me know who you are and where you're tuning in from. I always love seeing people from all over the world tuning in to these streams. It makes me happy, especially everyone overseas who, for some of you, it's midnight right now. So thank you for staying up way past your bedtime, certainly past my bedtime. I'm in bed by like 9, 10 o'clock. And Marissa says, I feel like Adobe Max was not that long ago. It really wasn't. Feels like it was yesterday. And of course, this year, if you, ha if you missed the news, this year is going to be very different. Adobe Max is going to be 100% online. We're keeping everyone safe from the current pandemic. And it's going to be 100% free, which is going to be even better. So we're going to be able to share our knowledge. I'm going to be hosting some sessions and maybe doing some interviews, a lot of cool stuff. We're going to be streaming a lot for Adobe Max. And of course, new updates are just around the corner. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be really fun. All right. So let me hop over to my screen and we are going to get Vipin says it's midnight. Man, Vipin is in the chat all the time. And thank you, Vipin. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to hop over to my screen and we're going to dive into today's masterclass. And as I mentioned on Twitter a few days ago, today's masterclass is all about tips and tricks. And if you're watching, and I know a lot of people are watching, we've got uh, F. Schmidt from Texas. We've got Billin from Las Vegas, Vipin from India, Janice from Mexico, Cancun, Mexico. I've been, I was there once. Nice place. I want to go back one day. I said your name right. Yes. Got Alberto from Sydney. Great to see all of you. <laughs> Minash is saying, H dog with the da boop. You know what? Where's the boop button? There's the, nope. Did, did the boop not work? Hold on. My boop is not working. I think I broke the broke the boop again. Eh, I'll get it working eventually. It seems like every second stream, the boop animation just stops working. Steven from New York, Michelle from Florida. Great to see all of you. I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, tips and tricks. Today is all about tips and tricks. So if you are watching, and I know many of you are, did the boop work? I don't know if the boop worked. Let me know in the chat if the boop worked. Throw some questions in there. Because, I, you know, today's, I don't really have a plan for today. I want to go over a few things. And Susanna's saying Max is virtual and free. It is. And so we're going to have more information over the coming weeks and months all about Adobe Max uh, 2020. But, yeah, it's going to be free. And we're going to reach a lot of people. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up. And I'm just trying to fix my boop. And, oh, you know what? This could be it. Aha! Boop! There we go. Speaking of boop... If you take a look at this, I did some branding all about boops. I don't know what I'm going to use this for. I'm thinking about, you know, I've done podcasts before and I've been on podcasts. I've hosted podcasts. Maybe I want to create another podcast all about boops. I don't know, the Boopcast or something like that. It'll be, you know, interviewing designers, maybe members of the Adobe Live community. I don't know. Just, I was just bored one day, so I created this. But yeah, today is all about tips and tricks. I'm still getting back into the rhythm of streaming, being off for an entire week. Actually, it's been almost two weeks now. You kind of, it takes a while to get back into things. I've got my coffee. Hopefully some of you have coffee or water or tea or whatever it is. Today is very casual, very casual. All right, Vipin says, I've been part of Max. Can you tell me what's happening there? So a lot, a lot is um, gonna be happening at Max. It's gonna be all online. Usually it's in person. Past few years have been Los Angeles. It's been in San Diego at times. I think at some point it was in Las Vegas, but all online this year. And we're gonna have a ton of sessions. I can't go into too much detail just yet, but there's obviously gonna be a lot of product announcements, training sessions, really cool stuff. I'm gonna be there. A lot of my colleagues are gonna be there. It's gonna be really fun. 
was the Boot Maiden XD. That one was made in After Effects. But this title here, that was made in Adobe XD. I actually did that live during one of my master classes. So if you missed that, I don't know if it's title. I don't know which master class. I've had a lot of master classes so far, but go back and uh, watch one of those. Courtney from Seattle, welcome. All right, so I want to kind of go over a few tips and tricks in Adobe XD today. I uploaded this, I think it was yesterday, the day before. Fun little experiment I was doing using Adobe XD. We're not going to go this in depth because there's a lot of shading, a lot of highlights and things like this. But the the base of this, you know, the, the toggle kind of swi sw swiveling, swivel, moving, I don't know, words are hard. Moving over to the left and the right, um, the right and the left, if you're keeping track and kind of elongating as it moves. We're gonna go over that today and maybe some shading and depth tricks. We might go over, oh, this one I definitely wanna go over. So this one over here, all about stacks, which is new to Adobe XD and using those to create some practical elements, especially with iOS 14 um, in beta right now. The public beta came out. I actually have it on my phone. It's pretty stable actually, but it is a beta. Some things do not work. So keep that in mind. But you can kind of use stacks to do things like this, right? And I actually tweeted earlier today that Chipotle, big fan of Chipotle, should do some sort of a widget using um, the new iOS 14 widget so you can very quickly order a burrito. I mean, these things are just what life is all about, right? So we're gonna create something like this today. And we may get into some branding, logo design using Adobe XD, who knows? We've got an hour. I've been rambling for about six minutes, so it's less than an hour, but it's just casual. And if you do have questions, if you wanna learn something very specific in Adobe XD, throw it in the chat. I'm gonna be peeking over from time to time and we are going to get going. Hopefully the music isn't too loud. Let me actually go ahead and hop over here. It feels a bit too loud for me. No, that's off. Well, if it's too loud, let me know and I will, uh, I'll finagle with it. All right. So here we have, we're gonna start with this, the stackable icons using the iOS 14 template, at least, you know, some of the elements from it. And Apple is actually working on an iOS 14 UI kit for Adobe XD, which is great. Don't know when that's gonna come out yet, but uh, Vipin's saying, can you do liquid swipe animation? Oh, I remember you asked about this not too long ago. I haven't experimented with that just yet, but one day I will definitely get around to it. I haven't forgot about it yet. So we've got a bunch of icons here. And if you take a look at the layers panel over to the left, it's, I mean, literally, it's just a bunch of icons, right? Just going all the way down and nothing is really organized. So, so what I want to do to start is start setting up some stacks so that I can very easily move these icons around. And then more importantly, get ready to add in some widgets onto this particular design. So. I'm gonna start by just grabbing all of the app icons, just like this, and I'm gonna group them, Command and Control G. And I might just type the app icons over here inside of the layers panel, just to keep things nice and organized. And my zoom thing is not working, there we go. All right, now if I were to go ahead and enable stacks right now, because stacks works horizontally or vertically, it's going to look at the orientation of all of these icons, and it's going to determine what the stack should be. So right now it's set to uh, vertical. So as you can see here, if I hover my mouse over here, this this zoom thing for some reason, one of the recent Mac OS updates just killed the zoom functionality. So when I zoom in and out, it gets very laggy. Um, Arthur is saying, what's the benefit of having liquid swipe in terms of usability? Honestly, if I'm if I'm being honest, probably nothing. It's a it's a fun thing to have, kind of like if you if you hop back over to Dribble, you know, I did this toggle switch, which I'm going to show you how to create shortly, where it you know it kind of elongates as it moves over. These things typically have nothing, no benefit for usability. It's just fun. It's nice to have but you should definitely focus on accessibility and usability first. And then if you can add something extra, you can have fun with it. So we've created a vertical stack and it created a vertical by default. And if I hop into this folder, you're gonna notice that XD has automatically grouped many of these rows. So it created groups for me. So to make my life a little bit easier, and I can just go through and just name this row and row and row, 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 row your boat, right? But now that a stack is created, I can very easily just grab 
any of these. You know, Adobe XD should definitely be on the top. So I can just grab any of these rows and move them around just like that, which is really cool, right? And if I have one of the rows selected and I duplicate Command and Control D, it automatically pushes all the other ones down right below it. So it gives me an another row without having to do any manual work. And what I can do now is I can also select all of these rows and turn stacks on for that. And because all the icons inside of each of those rows are going horizontally, XD has automatically determined that this should be a horizontal stack. So now I can go into these and just move icons around, right? I can go into this one, move that over here, right? And I can just do this. So I can, so I have basically have a stack in a stack and I can just move things around super simple, right? Very nice and simple. And if you haven't played around with stacks yet, definitely grab the update. It's Adobe XD 30. And can, can we believe we're already at 30? That's crazy. Grab Adobe XD 30, play around with stacks. I do have a video on letsxd.com all about stacks. I've also been planning a lot of fun content all about stacks and scroll groups and the daily creative challenge that I ran right before we went on break was all about stacks and scroll groups. So if you wanna go back and participate in that, behance.net slash challenge slash XD, you can re-watch those, you can download the starter files and you can just have a lot of fun with those two features. So what I wanna do now, now that I've have everything kind of stacked and ready to go, what we could do is we can actually start creating a widget. And you know, if you're a developer for iOS 14, you can this might definitely be come in handy, right? So I have all these rows, right? And again, you can rearrange them as you need to, but I might want to add a widget right in between here. So what I can do, hey, Rodrigo, welcome, is I can grab my rectangle. And what's really cool about stacks is when you're adding new elements, it just pushes things away. So I can just start, ooh, look at that. So I can drag out my area for the widget right here. I can round out the corners a little bit. And I'm sure there are guidelines on what the corner radius is for these widgets and the icons. I'm just kind of guesstimating right now. But of course, if you're developing it, everything will probably be contained within those rectangles. So you probably won't have to worry too much about that. I'm going to name this widget. Widget, I can't spell when I'm streaming. There we go. Maybe I need more coffee. I think I need more coffee. Yeah, I've been saying all time favorite is you know who repeat grids indeed. It's definitely one of my favorite features as well. It's been around since the beginning of XD, day number one, which is incredible. Now down below on these widgets, they have icons or they have text to indicate what this widget is for. So I'm gonna grab my text tool. I'm gonna type out, let's say, so this one I'm actually gonna do a Pokemon Go widget. I've been playing that quite a bit lately. Although I will, I will mention it doesn't work very well on iOS 14, so keep that in mind. Actually, it doesn't work at all. Uh, Yaki's saying, thanks for all the cool stuff, Howard. You're welcome. Is there a plan to have component states triggered by time? Um, so the short answer is probably. The long answer is the team wants to get around to more triggers for components, including drag and time and a lot of different things. They also want to tackle a lot more animation tools. That's going to come at some point in the future. One thing that I can say is the team is working very hard to improve components and states in their current state, no pun intended, totally intended, but they're, they're working on some improvements to that, especially with nested components and states um, and uh, horizontal syncing. So if you have multiple instances of a component and you change one label on one of them, it'll automatically update the, let's say, hover effect, right? So a lot of those changes probably have to come first before they start adding additional functionality like time triggers, but definitely something uh, yucky that they want to get to. So we've got this here. Now, thinking about how uh, stacks works, what I want to make sure to do is group these two elements so that they don't, they're not necessarily seen as individual components or elements within the stack. And <laughs> Vipin, no one asked about dark mode, indeed. Um, so if they if there were individual right and i do go ahead and adjust the spacing you're noticing that the text layer right below this widget is also adjusting as well and i don't want that i want that kind of to be part of that widget so if you group it and then you adjust right that doesn't take on the spacing which is exactly what i want and i'm going to make sure 
let's say we're gonna put it, I don't know, probably eight pixels from the top. That looks pretty good right about there. Let's change the spacing a little bit. Let's say 16 pixels, that looks fancy. All right. Laura is asking, is there a way to include external links? Not at the moment, something the team is looking into. I think one of the concerns is of course security and they wanna make sure external links are done really well. Um, you know, whenever you have the ability to link out externally, someone could take advantage of that. So something they're thinking about, something they're exploring, something they definitely want to uh, do very well. Adam is asking, do you like the new Adobe app icons? I do now. If I'm being honest, when I first saw them, because anytime something goes through a change, especially branding and something you've been staring at for who knows how many years, you're always taken aback. When I saw the icons, I was like, oh my gosh, they're different. What is happening? I'm never going to get used to them. Now I kind of like them. I, I'm kind of digging that they're all very unified. They're grouped based on the the focus, right? I like them. I'm digging it. All right, so for this text layer, I'm going to just change this to, let's say, medium so we can see it nicely. Maybe even uh, semi-bold. That looks pretty good. Make sure it's centered in here. Now, for this, what I'm thinking, as a Pokemon Go player, what I would love to see is progress of my eggs that are hatching in any mo any given moment. And if you're not a Pokemon Go player, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, it's probably just, you know, when I talk about Animal Crossing, right over your head if you don't know what I'm talking about. Turnips and things like that. Ooh, a widget for Animal Crossing turnips. That'd be cool. Anyways, um, so we've got this here, and I may want to, you know, display some eggs, what the progress looks like and that sort of thing. So one thing I'm going to do is first change the background color of this particular widget. Now, I've noticed playing around with the iOS 14 beta is most of the widgets are darker, at least my experience so far. There are no third-party widgets just yet, but most of the ones that Apple has provided are darker. So, you know... Pokemon Go, for the most part, has a lighter color scheme, something like this. I don't know if it's gonna really go well, especially if you are if you have dark mode enabled. So what I'm gonna do, oh, Vipin is saying, is there an update coming out like when we preview mobile apps on the screen will be displayed in a mobile phone cutout image? Um, maybe, you never know. Team's working on a lot, a lot of cool stuff. I can't confirm or deny anything, usually, but you know, the team is always exploring things. Sometimes they're exploring these things as a side project and if something comes of it then they'll kind of slip it in somewhere but who knows you never know so what i'm going to do for this one i'm going to just go a little bit darker and this nice blue kind of works with the rest of the design of ios 14 at least in the dark mode right so i'm going to leave it at that and now in here we want let's say the egg incubator so i actually have over here in finder i have a few assets that we can use including an empty incubator and also an egg as well. We have two different versions of the incubator. So I'm gonna drag this in here. Ooh, this is very large. Now you're, you're seeing stacks in action, right? And it's pushing things around because it's kind of pushing outside of that widget, which is really nice. That's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So if you do decide, let me actually go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. If you do decide to make this widget larger, so if, you're, if I'm holding alter option and just dragging, look at that, everything is moving up and down so it's kind of getting out of the way which is super cool and that incubator staying in the middle very cool all right so we've got our little lovely little incubator here and now down below what i would love to see is uh cody says what are your favorite pokemon um you know i'm a big fan of magikarp i don't know why but i don't know i maybe because it evolves into gyarados and it's just like so it goes from this flopping little fish into this magical powerful thing I don't know, it's kind of fun. Are those images from Adobe Stock? Which images? These ones here, probably, uh, these these are not. These are actually from the game here and then Chipotle, which I'm gonna get to shortly. Um, I grabbed from an S SVG website. So down below, we want to show the progress of this particular egg. We also want the egg in there. So I'm gonna grab the egg. Oops, no, I don't want the Chipotle one yet. Grab that, drag it in here. That's a very large egg. Stax is doing its thing. Drag that down. Now, because I don't have the layers of this particular incubator, if I put it behind it, it's not gonna work very well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drop the opacity just a little bit. Just a, eh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll put some highlights over top of it. I wanna look like it's, I wanna make it look like it's inside of the incubator, but for now we'll just, um, Chipotle egg, ooh, 
a Chipotle egg incubator. Now that's something I can get on top of. All right, so this might be, let's say 1.3 out of one kilometers. Right now they are doing a, like a half distance type thing, right? So this, I want to, I'm gonna make sure to bold this and maybe this side over here, I'm gonna just set to about regular. Now I do want to, in addition to this, I do want to add a little bit more of a, a diff difference between the active distance and the, the remaining distance or the total distance. So for this, I'm actually gonna select this text and we'll go for maybe some sort of a greenish blue. That looks okay, I think. Let's try a bit greener. That's not bad. It, it could work, maybe, we'll see. And then maybe for this, I'm just gonna drop the opacity a little bit. Let's say to about 50%, let's see what that looks like. All right, that could work. Now, if you're familiar with the game, you also have some sort of a progress bar. Usually it's right underneath the incubator and above the text. So with my line tool, I'm just gonna draw out a line just like this. Now, the there are two actual lines. There's one that shows the total distance, which I'm going to do the exact same thing. So set the color to white, set it to 50%, bump that up a little bit. And then we can kind of show what our progress is. So you can very, get a very quick look at what the your, your distance is. Adam says, what do you like to order at Chipotle? Uh, barbacoa burrito. That's my go-to. I don't think I've had anything else. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to duplicate this line, Command and Control D, move this inwards a little bit, and just sample the color that I'm using for the active. And maybe I'll even bump this up a touch. There we go. So now... I'm gonna make sure to group all these. Progress, and we've got our text layer, we've got our incubator here, I'm gonna group that, egg. And what we can do is because we're you know so focused on stacks, we can also group all of these elements. So I can group these, and this could be, I'll just call this egg, and we can turn on stack, which is automatically going to enable a vertical stack. And now if I did decide to want the text layer above that progress bar, Boop, I can very easily do that just like that. And of course I can adjust the spacing individually or all at once if I wanted to, but that looks pretty good right about there, right? All right, now of course I might want a few of them going across this artboard because you might have multiple eggs. I'm gonna put one sort of in the middle and maybe let's just drag this on top of there just to replace that incubator with a regular one. Those regular incubators, right? And maybe this one is, I don't know, let's say 1.9. Well, that, you know what? Nobody, I'm, I'm disappointed in all of you. Nobody caught my terrible mistake. 1.3 out of one, none of that makes any sense. 0 0.3. And this should be 0 0.9. There we go. All right. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? And dive in here to my progress line. Stretch that out, bam. Jennifer says, love the barbacoa too, yeah. Perfect, all right, so we've got two eggs going on, right? Now, if you are a Pokemon Go player, I would love to hear what else you might wanna put in a widget. Something, you know, maybe if there's a Pokestop nearby, there might be one right over here you can tap on, it automatically spins it. I don't know if that's possible, but something you can possibly do, right? Now, one other way you can display widgets inside of, <laughs> we knew what you meant. Yeah, you probably did. One other thing you can do to display widgets. Let me actually, whoop, look at that, woo, fancy. A display widgets in iOS 14 is, you know, more of a, you know, space here where it's like a two by two, I think it is. So for that, we have to get a little bit creative, right? So because, you know, we have line by line, we basically want to take up two of these spaces. So in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to turn off stacks just for a moment. I'm going to disable stacks and I want to ungroup these. And let me go ahead and now, of course, we probably need, we want Adobe XD in there, of course. We want the Tesla app in there. These ones don't care about, right? So what I'm gonna do is, ooh, home gym. Yeah, that could be good. Oh yeah, you should also put Pokemon in gym. So maybe if you do have one in the gym, maybe it shows how long it's been in there, something like that, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these. 
and I want to just remove these ones here, right? And in this space here, I want to go ahead and draw out one more widget, just like that. And I can also use my guides. I can draw, drag out a guide from the top here, oops, just to make sure everything lines up really nicely. Let's see, we have 16 pixels for the corner radius. I'm gonna make sure to match that right there. And I can also go ahead and if you select an element in Adobe XD, copy it just like that, Command and Control C. And then if you select another element, oops, I moved it, yeah, there we go. If you right click, you could paste appearance. Also Command or Control, Shift in V, which will basically take that gradient or the color that I used and apply it directly on there. If there's an image in there, it'll pop that in there as well. Borders, shadows, that sort of thing will all carry over really nicely. All right. So uh, Pascal says, if that's the case, we need to be sharp at your first progress bar should be one out of three. One out of, th oh, 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 oh. Yes, you're probably right. Something, something like that. So if that's half there, it's probably about there, I'm assuming. Probably. I can probably do some math. I can probably also get Adobe XD to do some math, but you know what? I'm not about that life. All right. So we've got that. I can also grab this down here just to make my life a little bit easier. Paste it and pop it right about there. There we go. All right. Things are looking pretty good. I'm going to make sure to group this, and this will be called Square Widget. Square widget. Now I can start stacking things again, right? So I've got the square widget and also these app icons. And I want to make sure to, you know what? I'm noticing one of them is not aligned. There's some stuff that's not aligned. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? All right. So I want to make sure to select all of these, including that, group these, and I'll call this row. And I can turn on stacking for this. I can also turn on, these are not lined up either. Man, I am terrible today. Nothing is lining up. Let me unstack this for a second. I am very particular when it comes to alignments, so if something's not lined up, I'm gonna just break the stream and make sure things are lined up. All right, these are not lined up either. Oh, it's gonna bother me. Okay, anyways, so I wanna make sure to group, grab these, 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 this is all good. Make sure stacks is turned on. And now I can just move things around just like I could before, right? I can also grab these individual ones, stack those, and I can just move these around. So stacks goes, you know, super in depth. But we have this section here, and now what I can do is kind of design a different view of what this particular widget might look like. So I can grab, let's say the egg over here, and maybe even the text layer, copy that, hop into my square widget, and paste some of this information. Now, of course, we have a larger area to work with and a different form factor, so we have to make a few changes, right? So, for example, I might want maybe the text to be a little bit larger and maybe this graphic to be a little bit larger as well, so you can kind of see just one egg at a time. And maybe instead of a progress bar, we can really get creative, very similar to the fitness application on iOS, right? we can use some sort of a progress circle. Laura says, Pokemon Go title is not that visible over the gray background. You're probably right, yeah, it's not. Um, and then I think in iOS 14, or at least on iOS in general, if I'm not mistaken, certain areas have little, eh, maybe they don't. I thought, yeah, some of them do have very subtle shadows on them. So that might be something we can do. I'm, I hate putting shadows behind texts, but you know, with, with mobile operating systems, having the ability to change your background, you're always gonna run into potential accessibility issues. So if I do go ahead and put a slight drop shadow, it would have to be super, super slight so that in most cases you wouldn't even see it. But if you do something like that, blur it a little bit more, you can kind of see that it helps a little bit. And when you're zoomed out, you can hardly tell that that shadow's there. So you, you can kind of get away with it in that case. The one thing you don't want to do is something like this where you really crank up that shadow and then you don't blur it enough and then you have this weird looking blob at the bottom. Definitely don't want to do that, right? All right, so going back to this, we might want a progress circle. So I'm going to grab my ellipse. Do you use the Nest app? I do. We have a ton of cameras in our house. It's pretty, it's, uh, it's a little bit crazy, actually. 
but we have a bunch of cameras. We've got the doorbell. So if any of you are thinking of breaking in, probably not a good idea. All right, so we've got our ellipse going on. Now we just want a border-based ellipse. So I'm gonna turn off the fill. I'm gonna set the border, let's set it to white actually, and we're gonna really crank up the size. And we're gonna, this is the inactive section. So I'm gonna just drop the opacity. Something to about, I don't know, 15% looks pretty good. And maybe make this a little bit larger. There we go, move this down a touch, beautiful. Now, we also might want the active uh, distance that we have been walking for this particular egg. So what I can do very easily, I can duplicate this particular layer, Command and Control D, and because I'm using, I wanna keep this fairly consistent, I can go ahead and sample for the border this color right here. If also, it's, if it's in my assets panel, which I should probably rearrange and add some colors to my assets, just like that. That way, if I do decide to edit this particular color, I can very easily make some changes across the board. Ooh, that, ooh, there we go. That looks like a nice color right about there. It's very similar, but it's a little bit different. All right, so we've got this. Now, of course, we don't want the entire thing filled up. Now, there is a, a crazy math equation that you can set it for like 70% or something like that. But honestly, if you just play around with the dashes and bump that up, play around with the gaps, you can basically, you know, do something like this, right? So 0 0.3 would be somewhere, somewhere there. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. We're gonna run with it. I might also want to round out the caps. So I'm gonna just press this button over here to the right within the properties inspector. My zoom, let me try and zoom in again. Yeah, it's not, there we go, right? Round caps, there we go, boop. And maybe for this one, just to show off a little bit more, we'll just do about half, so 0 0.5. And there we go. So now we have a completely different form factor for this particular widget. So, you know, when a developer, if you are developing something like this, you can kind of show your, um, you know, your coworkers, Apple, whatever it might be, how these different widgets would be displayed depending on whether or not, let me make this a bit smaller, whether or not, you know, someone wants a longer widget or a shorter widget. There's lots of different options within iOS 14. And again, because we're using stacks, I can just move this over here to the side, right? I think it's so fancy. It even gets a little bit transparent so you can see things behind it. Isn't that fun? And I can grab this one, move this up if I wanted. Oh, I don't have stacks enabled on the entire thing. Stacks, there we go. Look at that. Put my eggs right at the top. Let me move this over here. Bam. All right. So that's the Pokemon Go widget. Again, if you are just joining, if anyone's just joining, if you have questions about XD, Today's all about tips and tricks. Definitely throw them in the chat. I will be taking a peek. Now, the next one I might want to do is that Chipotle one that, again, you saw on Twitter earlier today. This one here basically just gives you the option to reorder your last meal, which is always fun, right? Especially when you're in a crunch. Maybe you're getting ready for a meeting. You just want to very quickly order something, have it delivered. View the menu or scan for, you know, when you're actually at the restaurant, you can scan your rewards. So something like that, you can use the basically the same form factor here. So I'm gonna delete some of this information. Now the background is gonna be a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit darker, as you can see here, but there's a little bit of red in it. So I'm gonna switch over to red and just drop this a little. Excuse me. Thank you, Cody. So we've got that right there. Now we want a few actionable items within this particular widget. I'm gonna name this Chipotle. It's making me hungry already. So I'm gonna grab a rectangle, draw one out like this. Round up the corners a little bit. That looks pretty good. Let's see, 13. Let's go for, there we go, 12 and 12. Fancy. Hey, A Vila, happy Friday. Yes, Friday. Cheers to a happy Friday. All right. So we've got this icon. And of course, inside of this, we might want, yeah, Adam, I would love a Chipotle widget too. I would probably use it way too often and I would go broke, but you know what? Life's too short. So I've got a Chipotle um, icon right here. I can just drag into Adobe XD, it's an SVG. Let me actually, let me actually not drag it into that stack. I'm gonna drag it outside of it just so I can kind of reference it over here. And because it's an SVG, it's made up of a bunch of layers. So I can just dive in here. And if I need to, there's all the layers. I can just delete things that I don't need. And I can just grab this icon here, copy it, 
and I can hop into my stack and paste it. Now, of course, the white on the white's probably not gonna work very well. So in that case, I might wanna go for that Chipotle red. So I'll just kind of bump, I think it's a little bit darker than that, but some, something around there. Now I can pop it on that white background and just make it a bit smaller. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit darker actually. Perfect, okay. Now to describe what exactly this is, those app icons are different sizes. Are they really? Hmm. Michael's, Michael's uh, pointing things out and it's gonna drive me crazy. No, I think, well, I think they're all 60 by 60. They should be, of course, this one up here is different sized um, and it probably should be because it's, a, it's, you know, it's in a smaller widget, but you know, maybe not. So if I go 60 by 60, it's a little bit too large. It's, yeah, it's a little bit too large. So if you want two rows of something inside of this widget area, it's probably not gonna fit. So it's gotta be a little bit smaller. Cause I believe if I'm not mistaken, the, the height of this particular widget is basically two app icons high. So you won't really have enough comfortable room to place those two app icons in there. Stacks is gonna make my life easier. I think it will. It's definitely made my life easier. So over here, I might want to kind of describe what exactly this particular button is. So this could be reorder my last meal. Now, of course, I want to left align this. And we're going to set this to, let's say, a semi-bold. Set that to white. That looks pretty good. And maybe just to, just to kind of, kind of confirm what your last meal was, right down below, we might want maybe an area text that kind of goes across here, right? Might want to just put in there what that last meal was. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and maybe I'll go for, let's say a medium italic and let's say barbacoa burrito. Uh, what do I get in my burritos? White rice, no beans, Salsa. Nope, salsa. Can't spell. Um, how's the iOS 14 beta? So, you know, so far it's very uh, stable, honestly. There are a few applications that crash immediately, so I wouldn't recommend it putting it on your daily driver just yet. But for the most part, it's um, it's quite stable, which is, which is quite nice. Did I spell barbacoa wrong? I don't know. Uh, what else do I put on there? Sour cream, cheese, and lettuce and maybe for this one I'm going to drop the size a little or drop the opacity a touch there we go all right so we've got this lovely little um, uh, area at the top that you can very quickly order your last meal sounds like you're about to be executed or something uh, maybe just to separate these two areas because down below you might have some additional actions I might just want to put a little bit of a line so I'll put a line right in the center here drop the opacity a little bit there we go. And then down below, we can actually just grab this and move it down here. I think this was 12, so I'll make sure to put that 12 as well. Perfect, 12 and 12. Now this one might be just to view your menu, for example. So I'm gonna just duplicate this and view menu. There we go. And we need an icon. So for this one, I can actually go to a plugin. So I have a plugin that I use all the time called Icons for Design. And it's a fantastic plugin, gives you access to open source icons. Let's see if I type in menu. We've got a restaurant menu here. I'm sure Chipotle has specific icons for things like this, but I don't have access to that. So I'm just gonna use this one here. Fippin says, it's past midnight and you're making me hungry. I know. It seems like a lot of my master classes and a lot of my streams revolve around food. I often do donuts. I know Jack is gonna be happy about that. Um, ice cream, I think I did for one of my last ones. Uh, burritos, tacos, I don't know, maybe I'm just hungry all the time. That could be it. Cody's also hungry. Yum. There we go. And I might want maybe one more off to the side. So I'm gonna duplicate this line actually and set this to, oops. Rotate it by 90. 90, there we go. Now of course stacks is enabled, so it's pushing things around like it should do. Make sure this is lined up. Move this down a touch, there we go. 
And I can just grab some all this information here and just duplicate it over. There we go. Now, if this one over here, because you know they have a rewards program, this might just be a button so you can open up the QR code very quickly. Get rewarded. And then in here, we might wanna look up, let's say QR. We've got a QR code right here. The one thing I don't like about this particular plugin, probably the only thing I don't like, is it puts icons, I don't know where it just decides to throw icons. But you know, it is what it is. They're free icons, so I can't complain too much. And there we go. All right, Cornell says, is the map plugin available to download or still in development? So it's still in development. I'm working very closely with Walter, who's doing a fantastic job. Um, we have we have some big plans for the, uh, the maps plugin. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Don't know exactly, we wanna make sure, obviously it's bug free and it has a, a nice amount of features in it. So stay tuned, we will get there. Uh, Michael says, background blur would be nice on those dark boxes. Yeah. Uh, that's that's definitely something. I don't know if widgets on iOS 14 support background blurs. It doesn't look like they do, but that would be kind of cool for certain widgets. Having a background blur on there would be kind of nice. All right, so there is the Chipotle widget that was created in Adobe XD. And of course, because Stacks is enabled, you can move things around, but of course Chipotle, the widget should stay right at the top because because burritos. All right, so we've, we've talked a little bit about stacks. We've talked a little bit about uh, widgets, iOS 14. I wanna move on to something a little bit different. And if we take a look at Dribble one more time, we've got this magical toggle that I designed and animated in XD. Again, we're not gonna go this in depth. We're not gonna touch on the shading and the highlights and things like that, but I will show you how to create that elongated effect and maybe a little bit of depth here and there. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of a protrusion down at the bottom, so you can touch on that. All right, so when I start projects like that, you know, specifically for Dribble, what I always try to do is start my artboards at a supported size, and it's four by three for Dribble. And in that case, especially if you're uploading a video to Dribble, you want to do 1200 by 900. And that'll give you the exact size that you need for a video shot on Dribble. If you are uploading just a photo, I believe it goes all the way up to 1600 by, if I go ahead and lock this, if I lock that, 1600 by 1200. I believe that's what it is, but they do have requirements. But this one is going to be animated, so I will leave it about here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we want to design a very simple toggle switch for this particular example. Again, not very in depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the background color to, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in here just to make it a little bit fancy. And for the actual toggle, super simple, right? You've got a rectangle. Draw out a rectangle like this. And you're gonna round out those corners all the way. There we go. Bam. Easy peasy. Now maybe for the actual toggle, maybe we'll go like a nice blue, something like that, right? All right, now here's where things get a little bit more complicated, but a lot of fun. What we're gonna do is we wanna create the actual switch, that little ellipse. Now, what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna grab the ellipse tool and draw one out. And you might be thinking, well, why not? It looks exactly like it should look. Now, if you're only concerned about moving the toggle from left to right and not having any fancy animations, by all means, use an ellipse. But in this case, what we actually want to do is we want to use a rectangle and create an ellipse from that. So I'm going to grab a rectangle, draw one out like this, right? Make sure it's centered. We've got 25, 25, good enough. And I'm going to go ahead and round out the corners completely. So we essentially have an ellipse but it's disguised as a rectangle. Very sneaky, right? But this will allow us to actually pull out the left side or the right side and maintain the shape when it kind of elongates and then collapses back inwards. So we've got that done. Now, to help us with the process of elongating and then collapsing during the animation, we actually want to utilize a mask. 
So what I'm going to do is I've got the rectangle, I'm gonna name this toggle. I'm actually gonna duplicate this, Command and Control D, and I'm gonna use this as the mask. So I'm gonna make sure to select the mask layer that's above the toggle switch. I'm gonna select the toggle switch as well. So Command, I'm holding down Shift and just selecting the one right below and object mask with shape. Now Michael is asking, is there an actually an option? Is there actually an option when you draw a shape that the border isn't automatically on? So at the moment, no. Um, however, a lot of designers have been requesting this and it's something the team is absolutely looking into. From my perspective, I don't know if this is the official answer, but I think that the reason it's done is mostly for accessibility. So if you have an artboard, artboards typically start white and most people don't change the color of the artboard. If you were to grab a rectangle and you were to draw a rectangle, that shape is also white. So if the border was not there, you would essentially have this. You know, of course you can see it a little bit, but having that border there does help a little bit with accessibility. So it's something the team is looking into, but of course they want to pay attention to things like that. It would be nice for certain, you know, to have the option to set a default, very similar to Photoshop. You can set default strokes and outer glows and things like that. That would be kind of fun, but something the team is absolutely looking into. All right, so we've got here, we've got our toggle, which I'm gonna name, which is basically grouped into a mask. We've got this exact same shape. Now, what we want to do is we want to set it up for the final position. Now, if I were to simply duplicate this artboard grab my toggle, move it on over to the right. Nothing is really gonna happen, at least in terms of fanciness. And we're all about fanciness, right? So if I go into prototype mode and I wire this up, let's say I just choose a tap trigger and auto animate, and let's do ease in and out. Let's do 0 0.8 seconds. When I play this and I tap on it, the circle just kind of moves over to the right-hand side, which again, if that's what you're looking for, go for it. But we want to get a bit fancy. And this is where masks come into play. So if I go back to the first artboard, what I want to do is keep the mask the same size, but the toggle switch, the actual rectangle that we converted into an ellipse, I want to move this outwards, right? Something like this. Let me actually move these both artboards a little bit. Let me move them over here. And because we have that mask, which is the in the shape of a, an ellipse, when we click off of it, it looks like nothing really happened. But inside of this mask, we have an elongated toggle, right? So now if we press play, nothing really happens again. And it's because in the final position, we need to do something, right? And all we have to do here is just grab the mask and just elongate it a little bit. You know, we've already got the toggle switch back to its final form, which is basically just an ellipse, right? But if we just drag the mask to about here, right? And let me zoom in so you can kind of see what we're dealing with. There's the, there's the mask there. I just made it a little bit longer. So now if I go back here, woo, look at that. Isn't that fancy? Play that one more time. Woo. So as it's moving over, because of the way we set up the mask and the initial shape, it's kind of, so the shape is getting smaller, but the mask is getting a little bit larger. So it gives that impression that it's kind of elongating and then kind of moving over and then collapsing. So it's a fun little trick to do all on, you know, two different artboards, or you can even do it on one artboard if you're utilizing components, which is super cool, right? So there you go. Then you can do from this artboard back to the first. So you can just drag this over, right? So you can just keep that going back and forth and there's a little bit of elongation, it collapses and then you're good to go. Now, of course, you might be asking, you know, how do you get this to change color? So XC doesn't auto animate colors, it basically just switches over to it, which if you're creating something like a toggle switch, it's probably more than enough. You don't need any fancy color changes. So what you can do is just basically, this might be the off position, just change this to like a darker color, right? and then view, it just kind of changes as it's switching over. And you know, this is probably a little bit too slow, to be honest. So what I would probably do is just bump this to about 0.4 seconds, 0.4, and then you'd hardly notice that color difference, right? Vipin is saying, 
all the shapes and layers have the same name, absolutely. And that's one thing you have to keep in mind when you are auto animating in Adobe XD is things have to be the same name. So if I just change this to toggle switch on the second artboard, but not the first, you're gonna notice that it just kind of cuts because XD doesn't recognize that those two shapes are the same across both artboards. So you have to make sure that they are named the same and then view. Now what we can do also do is add a little bit of depth. So you're noticing in the dribble shot, there's a little bit of a, there's a border around there. There's a little bit of a shape underneath and we can just have a little bit of fun with that. So what we can do is on this shape here, I can just duplicate this, move it to the back, move it down a little bit and just kind of drop this color touch. I can even move this in a little bit. I can play with the roundness if I needed to. But that looks pretty good, right? We can also introduce a little bit of blue because it is a bit 3D, right? So it might be picking up on some of the color of the background, just a touch. And you can also grab this shape here and add a bit of a shadow. Now you're not adding a shadow in the traditional sense. You're actually adding a shadow as sort of a highlight to add a touch of depth. So I'm gonna change this to white change the blur to zero and drop the Y value just a little bit. And now we have a little bit of depth going on on our toggle, right? There we go. Now, like we were talking about earlier, right? We need to make sure that the everything is kind of the same and in sync across both of these artboards. So what I can do is on this one here, I can copy it and I can make sure to paste the appearance. Now, of course it did paste the appearance, which is gray in this case. So I can just go ahead and change this to that blue where we're using, but that highlight does remain. I can copy this one here, paste it, and there we go. So now if I go ahead and play, we've got our lovely toggle switch going back and forth, right? Looks pretty good. And you can, whoops, where did that come from? And you can do some really cool things, you know, by using shapes and shadows and, uh, you know, different colors to create some fun little icons. So for example, let me go ahead and create in the last few minutes that I have, I might want to create some sort of a, a 3D, I don't know what you would even would call it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out a shape just like this. I'm going to round out the corners a little bit. And let's go ahead and give it a bit of a gradient. Maybe on the top, it's this nice bluish green. And then we wanna go basically that color, but a little bit darker. And maybe we'll, whoops, maybe we will angle it a little bit. Now to help, help really convey that it's 3D a little bit, what I can do is I can double click on the shape and just kind of move these outwards a little bit, just like that, right? Now you have to keep in mind that when you do that, when you convert a rectangle to a path, you, you lose the ability to control the rounded corner. So keep that in mind, right? So you might want to actually duplicate this first, move it down, and then just so we have this extra rectangle down here that we can use for some depth. So if I go to color, a solid color, something like this, right? Maybe a little bit more blue. And then I can play around with the rounded corners a little bit. So I can pull those inwards. And then just like I did with the other one, I can move these outwards a little bit. And there we go. So we have this fun little 3D shape. And again, just like I showed you on the toggle, what we can do is we can add a little bit of a shadow, set this to zero. And we can even use just a blue like that. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we have some depth going on. And then to really convey that there is a little bit of depth, you can put a little bit of a shadow behind here. Now shadows I'm very particular with, but in this case, we can bring in some color to the shadow, bump this down, really blur this out a little bit. And if you wanna be very, have like complete control over your shadows, what you can do is you can actually do this. I'm actually going to undo these shadows I'm gonna duplicate this layer, move it to the back, and just bring this in a little bit. And you have this shape here, right? 
you can turn on object blur. So you can essentially use a shape as a shadow instead of using an actual shadow. This gives you a lot more control over the shadow because then you can make it a little bit smaller, make it larger and that sort of thing. You can mess with the color, you can add gradients. A lot of cool things you can do once you start experimenting like that. And then drop this. And of course, if you have objects behind it, you can use blending modes. There we go, right? And if I do decide to use a gradient, let's add this one here. And while I'm doing this, make sure to stick around. We've got Andrew and Nick coming up in just a few minutes. So you won't want to miss that. It's going to be a good time. Drop this a touch, right? Move this down. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that fancy? And I've got this fun little 3D looking shape that you can use for just about whatever it is that you want. You can put icons on there. Hey, th hey, Kate. Kate says, love seeing some rad 3D work being done. Yeah, maybe one day I'll, I'll do like a whole masterclass on 3D stuff in Adobe XD. But just about out of time. Big thank you to everyone who has joined me today. We've got Cody and Kate and Gent and Cornell and Vipin and everyone else who has been tuning in. Big thank you once again, stick around. We have Nick and uh, Andrew coming up in just a few minutes, stick around for that. And then we've got Jesse with the Daily Creative Challenge. And to wrap up the day, I believe, Kyle T. Webster is gonna be do doing some amazing draw long stuff. So especially if you have kids, pop them in front of the computer, give them a crayon, an Apple pencil, whatever it might be, and have them let them have a lot of fun. So. That's it for me for today. I will see you all next week with another masterclass. And uh, stay, safe, stay safe, everyone. And I don't know, words are hard. See ya.